Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me on another of my wonderful interviews. As you can see today, I'm in the kitchen and I have a guest, Dean from Buxton. Buxton is in what county is that? Derbyshire. It's, it's in Derbyshire. It's in the High Peak. Yeah. In the Peak, the lovely Peak District. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. And I have to say that Dean has driven all the way down about five hours you said yeah to come to the kitchen because you don't do zoom no i'm not a big fan of the internet stuff although obviously this is going to this go is, out on yeah. the internet yeah. so i very much admire okay. and i'm very grateful that you've come all this way down and and although i did offer you the zoom you said no no i'm going to come down so we've had tea and biscuits and i've still got a bit of my well i've got a coffee now and you've got uh, a whiskey and so oh no it's uh, <laughs> fruit juice yeah so dean really is fruit juice yeah we're going to talk about <clears throat> um common law uh but, yes yeah common um, law yeah and we're going to talk about uh, uh, lots of lots of interesting things because you've been watching my show for a long long time and in particular the last few time and you've been watching um various different guests who've come in with different versions of common law, natural law, God's law, legalese, and all of this stuff. Correct. And uh, you did get in touch and you said, oh, I've got some pointers that would be um, good to share. Yeah. And of course, you've got your own story of going into court and testing all of this for yourself, which has been uh, fascinating. We've obviously had a conversation before we recorded. So, Dean. Yeah. Where would you like to start? Um, perhaps on the definition of common law because it can be uh, misconstrued as to what it is yes so there's no actual definition that i'm aware of that's out there uh, but i've put something together it's fairly simple but i, I believe it um, is explanatory of, of what it is so so common law the definition is the customs that the people choose to be governed by i like that I like that because, <clears throat> because I did ask some other people what common law is and they said it's just common sense, which common sense for me might be very different to what your common sense is. Yeah, and it's bad form to use the same word within the definition itself. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, so just say that one more time. So, so the common law, I would say the definition is the customs that the people choose to be governed by. And the specific point in that is the people choose to be governed by yes which makes it common to all yes that, that's so, that's so clear that's very clear brilliant okay and there is confusion though with common law as we said because there's there's two different oh, well i'll let you explain because um that's where we go yeah so there is much confusion it's not very well known that there's two types of common law um, there is the English common law, which is case law and precedent, which every s solicitor lawyer will tell you, that's the English common law. But the lesser known common law is from the Anglo-Saxon part of our invasion, the invasion that happened on these islands. Um, there's various dates, but it started from around uh, 450 uh, AD. Uh, and then was there was multiple invasions from then on. Right. But it's mainly the Anglo-Saxon part is where we get our trial by from. So trial by ordeal. Yes. Trial by combat. Trial by fire and water. It's where we get our trial by from. And when you read a bit of history <clears throat> and you hear about these these trial bys, you know people will go out and they'll as you say, trial by combat or trial by this or trial by that. And then that's what defines who was the winner in that instance, the two people do it. And yeah. I suppose that's what the old uh, pistols at dawn. Thing yes. Is. Yeah. That's trial by combat. Yeah. So, uh, but we don't do so much of the pistols at dawn these days. <laughs> no. Um, fortunately, but we do do it in a, in a more, let's say, sophisticated way, I suppose. Perhaps. And it may not be the right. But go back to the, the first one, the, the English case law. I suppose that's the just to explain that more clearly. That's where you've had a, a trial. There's an outcome. And you've but set, by a judge. By a judge. A judge might set a precedent at some point. Yes. In a particular it, case, like a high profile case. 
and then that would be filtered down as precedent. And then how all, you futurely look at that. How all the other magistrates or judges would. Yes, it's then reference it because often yeah. you'll see that, you know, so-and-so versus so-and-so and the conclusion of that becomes the the law, I suppose. Yeah, if you consent to that. If you, yeah, yeah abso absolutely. Yeah. Um, but older than that is the... Much older. Much older than that, of course. It's part of our customary traditions. Yes. Yeah. And that's what you're suggesting is that we ought to be governed in that or governed is perhaps the wrong word no that, governs fine governs yeah. fine governed in the way that the people are making the decisions for the people rather than a smaller elite yeah who are making the decisions yeah i mean when we grow up you know we're taught from very early age from the age of let's say five that if there was two kids playing in a sandbox one of them brought a bucket and spade and the other one didn't the mother and father would teach the kid that the one who didn't bring the bucket and spade can't go and pinch that one's bucket and spade. Right. You know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's simple. And it's really that thing about what, what's inherently right and what is inherently wrong. And if you've got enough people, like 12 just men, as they yeah. say, and women, who will then look at your complaint and the law that it's supposedly broken or the legal... The legal legislation that it's supposedly broken they can come to a decision themselves without any intervention of a judge or in fact the jury are the judge aren't they correct yeah they're the judges of the facts and the law and then that's how it is so there seems to be now something that sounds like a trial by jury trial by your peers yeah that is in in the legal system that we're being used and that is this thing called a jury trial. Yes. Can you explain then the difference between, <clears throat> between yeah. the two? So the difference between the two. So the first one that we should be familiar is uh, trial by jury. So the definition that I like to use for that is a jury is able to determine and render a verdict of fact and law. So that's for us in England. But the jury trial, which is the French system, a jury is not able to determine and render a verdict on law. Right. Only of the facts. So I wonder why we have adopted a French system. Because in 1972, we were dragged in to the, oh, the uh, European common market. Right. And at that stage, we lost certain benefits. Right. Oh, that's very interesting. So up until 1972, we would have had the trial by jury. Yes. And now we've switched it around. But most people would not know that had happened. No. And because the names are so similar, because most people these days aren't taught this in school anyway, and unless you actually are up in front of the beak or in front of the bench or in a magistrate court, it may not even occur to you or unless there's a high profile murder case or something mm. like in the old days, um, it wouldn't occur to you that there was a, a difference. No. But the words are very important. Words are extremely important. Yeah. Words can be words or they can be swords with the S on the front. Yes. Yes. Words or swords. So, OK, so we we've defined what common law means. Yes. And we've looked at the two differences of common law and the two different systems. And, and I think the audience probably are thinking, hang on a minute, there's one that favours the people and one that clearly favours a separate bunch of people. Yes. Which might be the, the judges, the courts, the private bar guild <clears throat> and so on well don't they always do that don't they always muddy the waters by calling one thing very similar yes. to the other yeah absolutely. for instance the names last names they would say that those last names are very similar when they're capitalized yes or when they're a proper noun they're very similar but they're not the same but they're not the same yes yeah and that's been a journey that i've been on over the last 12 months understanding the the legal fiction and and all of that yes so where do we go from where do we go from here so let's go on to um i don't like to uh, talk about the magna carta too much or bill of rights or any written instrument mm. because i believe 
a written instrument can be corrupted. You have to have all types of definitions for a particular written instrument prior to writing the instrument. You know, that those definitions have got to be there. Yes. And I think I think on most documents the definitions are not even there so it's up for interpretation and and when you say that i'm sorry to butt no, in no it's there. fine um we know that there is a, a legal definition for certain words yes. and they're produced in various um dictionaries one being black laws dictionary yeah which i do have a massive great copy of um because i thought it was important to see that yes and this is that's the 11th edition but if you go back to early editions the um, definitions of things are more extreme and more obvious. It seems they've tamed it down a bit. Yeah. Uh, again, that may be to deceive. Definitely. But when you're in court and you're dealing or, with, or you're dealing with lawyers and barristers and stuff, you don't know what dictionary there are. You know, the ordinary person wouldn't no. know whether it's the Oxford English dictionary that that we're all using here or whether it's another dictionary yeah. that has different meanings for different words. Yeah, they don't, they don't give you a dictionary when you walk into court yes. and say, we are going to use this dictionary or we're going to use several, several dictionaries. Yes. And we're going to swap and change between words depending on what outcome we wish to achieve. Yeah. They don't do that, no. No, they don't tell you that, but they, they are using it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, so you've, you, had, I've had, you've had the beginning. Yeah. What common law is. Yeah. So um, I've spoke about that. I don't like to use written instruments, but I do like uh, hard sort of facts and substance. And there is a particular case where trial by jury, uh, there was a, uh, a precedent set. So there's a case called uh, the William Penn case, William Penn trial. Uh, in 1670. Now, are you familiar with the William Penn case? I, um, only w what we briefly spoke beforehand. Yeah. But William Penn, I know, is the guy behind Pennsylvania. Correct. He lived in England, not far from where I am. And there's a, he was a Quaker, wasn't he? he? Well, he was a man. He was a man. And then he um, adopted the religious practices of, of Quakerism. those Quakers. Yes. Yes, yeah. you see how important getting the words yeah, quite right. Yeah, very much um, so, yeah. Yes, and th there's a place called the Blue Idol, and actually I've got a video of uh, me video uh, visiting that about three or four years ago, and if I remember, I'll put a link in the description. You may find it interesting just to see that, but, but yes. Um, yeah, so uh, William Penn was... Um, his father was, uh, I believe he was an admiral, in in the uh, his his royal highness's uh, military so he was an admiral he was high up he was very wealthy and um william penn was obviously the son he was about 22 23 24 years of age when this happened and a thing called the conventicle act in around sort of 1665 came into um being and it stated that people could not congregate for, with more than five people. So five people or more could not be uh, assembled in any one place other than by a established church. So what they meant by that was Church of England. Right. So does that, was, I mean, that must have been a period in history of a certain time because people yeah. were going to pubs or taverns and inns of course look up the conventicle act right of 1665 or 1664 i believe it was and that stated that you couldn't congregate for religious purposes uh five or more or more than five um uh, uh it was a criminal offense offense right so um and if we could just insert the boris johnson clip where he says few years ago that six or more you can't congregate together either and simply to demonstrate that there's nothing new under the sun they've tried it before they tried it a few years ago maybe they'll try it again in the future but just don't worry they'll they'll just keep trying these things yes but, and these acts and these statue i mean that's legislation yeah um that they're 
forcing down on people. And I guess, as you say, you know, historically, they go, well, it worked before, we'll do it again. Yes. So uh, the way I like to look at legislation is, uh, I've got my own definition of it, I've memorised it, that an act of statute is given the force of law by the consent of the governed. Right. So say, an, say that again, because that's very powerful. Yeah, so an act of statute is given the force of law by the consent of the governed. So when you consent to it, it's given the force of law, but it's not actually law. Right. Um, so you might say, well, how do we consent to it when we're out on the street? Mm. Well, we consent to it in that courtroom when we are one of the 12 jury members. We have the right to judge the law, not just the facts. So an act of statute could be given the force of law and be treated as law if 12 jury members say so. Right. Yes. And those 12 jury members are, of course, members of the community, members yeah. of the... They're not, they're not members of the court making it up. Correct. And that goes back to the original definition, the customs that the people choose to be governed by. Yes. Common law. Common law. Okay, so this, this precedent that was set <clears throat> with William Penn and all of that, how does that... Where yeah, does that so uh, if we could insert um, or have a link to the actual video, because it's an excellent video, it gives you a good uh, um, sort of description of what happened uh, around his time. And there's also an audio of the actual case. Um, some TV or radio production companies came together to do an audio of the actual case in court and it's an excellent rendition of the proceedings and you get to hear the to's and fro's from William Penn to the judge to the jury and it's it's a very good So in rendition. other words you're saying you're hearing a reenactment but of a jury Correct. Or I nearly said the wrong version a trial by jury yes. rather than a jury trial which would be good. So if I can find that link um, it'll be in the description if I can put a bit in it, it will but if I don't don't worry check the description. Yes so that particular case um, William Penn was charged with congregating of more than five people in a particular, particular area so the case happened in London at the Old Bailey and a long story short, the jury came back and stated that they were not going to find him guilty of an unlawful assembly. Right. So the people were choosing to judge not only the facts of the case, yes. the facts where he were there, but they were judging the law, saying this is an unjust law and therefore not finding him guilty by stating it was not an unlawful assembly. They wow. didn't say that, they just said, um, we find him guilty of being in Grace Church Street. That's all they said. They should have said unlawful assembly yeah. to a multitude unlawful assembly, but they didn't. They judged the law and it was an unjust law. And there's a plaque. I understand. There is a plaque at the Old Bailey. If you go out to the old entrance at the Old Bailey, there is a big plaque uh, that says um, William Penn was tried here in 1670. So there we go. In London at the Old Bailey. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So that's... that's so yeah. that was the precedent that was set. Yes. Um, because um, the judge at the time did not like the verdict that the jury gave. I'm sure he didn't. The, the judge locked up some of the jury members without food, water, whiskey, and, you know, warmth. And uh, a writ of habeas corpus was petitioned to the Court of Common Pleas. And Judge Vaughan, long story short, a Judge Vaughan came back and said, the jury shall not be punished for bringing back a verdict right or wrong yes in that judge's eyes oh, i see yes yeah. so that is the hard precedent that the jury can determine not only the facts but the law it was set then yes so that's really interesting because that was set in the english common law yeah the, down in the, london down in london and so that's you know that is a rock solid piece of law if you go and check the plaque it'll yeah. tell you all about it it's still there at the old bailey in london 
Great. Where do we go from here with our discussion? <coughs> I just want to make sure we're still recording, which we are. Yeah, Brilliant. so that's uh, a brief history. That's uh, a solid case for it to be founded on. It's not a written anything. It is a solid uh, factual case that happened. So people think, well, it is trial by jury still alive and kicking yes now i've had people on the channel say it stopped in 1933 i think yeah and or or it's as rare as hen's teeth yes obviously hens don't have any teeth they right? don't <laughs> they have a beak so um but it is still alive and kicking um if you wish to research uh, the extinction rebellion case uh, they caused criminal damage to a shell building I believe in 2019, um, during their case, they admitted criminal damage to the jury, but the jury came back and said, we're not going to find you guilty, even though you've admitted it, even though you have broken the, the, the law, we're not going to find you guilty, and they were found not guilty. I'm no, no fan of Extinction Rebellion, no. but it is a high-profile case that people can research and so in that case, the, ju the jury were acting as not only the jury, but they were also acting as the judge. Correct. In that, yeah. in that case, which these days, most cases seem to be jury trials. That's what happened to you. Yes. And just to, without going into all of your history, but you did tell me how when it came to the judgment. Yes. The jury clearly hadn't come to a unanimous decision. And only seven members of the jury came out Correct. with the verdict the judge liked, which wasn't the judge, the, ju the one Five that Five had disappeared. Yeah, and that yeah. should not happen. No, it shouldn't. It's got to be 12, and if one man disagrees, then that creates a hung jury. And we, I mean, if people have seen the film 12 Angry Men, yeah. it sort of illustrates that whole one point that they were looking for a unanimous decision but i think it was john fonda who mm. who the actor as the character said i'm i can't commit to this because there's there is reasonable doubt and reasonable that's, doubt that's all he had to have and and the film goes on and you everyone is turned around um so that's a great illustration and that's all they need to say they only need to say reasonable doubt yeah there's no need to go on and explain ourselves no if a court administrator was to ask it's simply repeat the sentence they haven't proven beyond a reasonable doubt yeah and that's it there's no need to discuss any other thing it's reasonable doubt reasonable doubt okay so um so is 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 a uh, trial by jury still alive and kicking yes very much so and i've also got other examples uh, from 1998, uh, 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002. There are lots of trial by jury examples where the jury have not only judged the facts, but they've also judged the law. When you read the entire description of the case, you can tell. And if you're up against it and you're in court, do you know if you are having a trial by jury or a jury trial? the simple answer is no right <laughs> and and who's making that decision then i don't think there's anyone making a conscious decision other than all of those judges and magistrates and the government side of it they hate the people deciding mm. the people's future yes. or the people's outcome judgments they hate it because in a, in a magistrate's court, I mean, by definition, I suppose, it's a magistrate, one single person mm -hmm. who's making the decision. And that in, in and of itself, in my mind, it may be a very minor thing, but surely the people of your community should be making that decision, not just one particular person. Yeah, well, the, I believe the reason that they change things from a full trial of 12, 12 jury members, to only one or three, sometimes it's three, yeah. is if you're going to write several more laws, laws, acts of sta acts, acts an, of act, an act of statute, if you're, going to, if you're going to write several more of these, you're going to create more work for the administration there, so you need to speed up the process right. somehow because you're going to have a flood 
of all of these extra fines, yes. court appearances. So you need to, under the guise of streamlining, right. you need to start abolishing some of these trial by juries and get in just a one judge or three so-called yes. magistrates. So that's that's convenient for them. Very convenient. Um, especially if you're, you know, one of the <clears> 6,000 <throat> um, people who fell behind or deliberately didn't pay their council tax in Portsmouth that I reported on with uh, somebody uh, the other day, um, Rob. And, you know, you're trying to get 6,000 people through the system and you're doing it in a block almost stamp, 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 that's it, there's the verdict, bang, 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 in, in a court without anybody actually turning up and having their day and having a jury decide for them on that particular one yeah. issue. It, it's very one-sided. So imagine those 6,000, imagine 6,000 trial by jury cases. Yes. They would never get through it. No. That's why they tried to... it's not the people's to... fault, though, is it? <laughs> it's not the people's fault. No, it's not the people's fault. No, it's, it's nobody's fault, but it, it's that they have had to, yes. which they shouldn't, but they've had to, to get all these extra fines, extra control measures in place. They've had to streamline it, so they've had to push the trial by jury out. further and further out to now that there's only really, when it comes to trial anywhere around 1% of trials of an entire year. Yes. I think there's something like maybe 70,000 trials every year. It's like 1%. Wow, so very, very, very few. Very few, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm keen that we obviously understand what we're doing, but I'm keen that we all demand our rights to trial by. Yes. Trial by jury. Yes. Because as Thomas Jefferson said, it's the only method to which a government can be held to its constitution. And he says it's the only method, not it's one of many, but it's the only method to which a government can be held to its constitution. And, and so how easy is it to demand your Day, if your day in court is coming, that you have a, a fair trial and a trial by jury? It's going to be difficult. When a bully wants their dinner money or wants your dinner money, you might be in for a bit of a punch up right. with the bully, but are you going to just keep rolling over and giving your dinner money to the bully? Or are you actually going to say, no bully, I, I don't want to give you my dinner money. You know, go away. Yes. Okay. So, so the answer is not easy. Not easy. Thanks. Not easy. But it, <laughs> and I think people are getting that. You know, yeah. They're beginning to understand the, the situation, but they're also beginning to understand that the system that we have is very much loaded against us, but, the, but we do have ammunition. Yes, definitely. We have ammunition. And, and, we, and we, we just have to wake up to that. Yeah. And, and that's partly what you're... Let, let's what you're, use it whilst we've got it. Yes, that's yeah. right. Before we're all herded <clears> into... <throat> Massive jails, whatever. Anyway, carry on with your first um, points. Yeah, so um, we've gone over the, the dates and cases of uh, trial by jury. Going on to why trial by jury is the only fair way that you will get a fair trial. Mm. Because if you have it by a judge or a magistrate, their hands are tied. And all you have to do is look at the oaths that they swear... And it says in their oath that the, the judge or the magistrates will do, will do right by all manner of people after the law. So they'll do right by all manner of people after the law. So the law has to be applied first. Correct, for a judge or a magistrate. For a judge or a magistrate. And then after that, they'll do. how can they do right by anybody after the law's been done? That's why their hands are tied. Right. You can't get a fair trial, only one way you will be put after the law. Yes. Yeah. So it should be the other way around. It should be. The, they should change the word, mm. you know, from my opinion, to the word do all, all, to do right to all manner of people after the law. It should be before the law. Yes. The people should be before the law. So the peep, So in other words, those people are doing the trial by jury and making up that decision. And that is the law. Yes. That is, that is the law from that point onward. Yeah. But there's a second oath. 
Um, yeah, so the, that's the uh, judicial oath, and then there's an oath to the king himself to, um, what's the word, to be obedient, to be a servant, um, that he is their master, effectively. So the people are saying that, that the king is their master? No, the judge. No, the judge. The judges, yes. magistrates, they take two oaths. One yes. is the, the oath of allegiance to the king. Yes. And then the second is the judicial oath, which is that one that says it does to do right by all manner. Uh, to do right to all manner of people, to all manner of people after, after the law. And so that one, <clears> I mean, <throat> I've heard it put that that is the sort of the oath to the private bar guild, the court system that is um, the based on canon law, Roman law? I think it's got multiple angles right. in it, okay. which is why it's not for us. Yes, either way, it's, it's, it's an unjust system. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Okay, so we've looked at the, the, the oaths, and that, that's what they say. Can you challenge them in court and say, what oath are you under? Can you explain your oath and how does that help Okay, me? so f for me personally, when I went into court, uh, I, I was, you know, on, doing it on the cuff. So I kept the words that I used down to an absolute minimum. I basically said nothing apart from I do not understand to every single question that they asked. But if you're in that courtroom talking with them, is it not going to be presumed that you can understand them? Right. The word understand is very tricky. Yes, to stand under. And to agree. The, and to agree and all the other legal legalese they use at you as we said with the dictionaries we yep. don't know what language did they give you a dictionary when you walked in no so i would say if you're talking to them other than an absolute minimum and you need to know the repercussions of the words that you're using i do not understand is a very good response to any questions that they are asked yes so I, I would go in there and make statements. I would never answer a question, answer a question yeah. because the one asking, the one as king is the one asking the questions is the one who is in the position of authority as king asking. Yes. yes. So if you ask a question back, you're, you're you can ask questions. Yes. yes. You're then acting as king. Yourself. If you wish, if but you I, wish. I would say don't talk unless you know what you're doing right. and keep it to an absolute minimum. It's just I do not understand. I, an example is that, that I, was, I was in a magistrate's court and uh, the, the magistrate wanted to gain jurisdiction over me and he, and he pointed at me and he said, take a seat like that over there. I just said, oh, I wish to stand where I am. So it's a statement. Yes. It's not an answer to the question. Yes. It's a statement. And you did. And, and I stood did. where I was. And then the magistrate said, take a seat louder at me take a seat and i just said i wish to stand where i am and he then got up out of his chair bellowed at me take a seat like that like i was a dog mm. and i calmly said i wish to stand where i am he then sat back down ever so quietly and calmly and carried on talking to the clerk as right. though nothing had happened so it was a three times thing because a three times rule in the courtroom so well. yeah so it was that was more a drama he wasn't genuinely upset. it was drama he was trying to get the because what would happen if you had taken the seat i'd have been a good little doggy yes and so you would have acquiesced and they would have in their system would have taken jurisdiction yeah so by just standing your ground quite literally you were still you were still in your own power yeah you don't need to talk to enter into an agreement it c you can enter into agreement by your action Mm. Your inaction, meaning doing nothing. Yes. By your speech or by your silence. These four ways you can enter into an agreement or a contract. Yes. I've heard, um, and you can maybe tell me if this is true, that if you are, say you're talking to a policeman and you say, well, I'm going to remain silent, that then if you remain silent, you are effectively agreeing to whatever their terms might be because you're not rebutting it. Unless you say, I reserve my right to remain silent. And then you've possibly rebutted the fact that the, the silence does no longer account in their way. OK, partly, but I would change the word reserve because if you've got something in reserve, it's like back there. Ah, 
I would change that word reserve for exercise. I exercise. You see, you can see how these words are so vital. Yeah. Uh, but I love that. Yeah, I exercise my Because it's something that you're doing in the now. Yeah. It's not in reserve over it's there. Not, you, yes. you, it's... Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. what about when it says things like all rights reserved on a, on a form? It means that somewhere in your backpack, in, yeah. somewhere over there, you've got something reserved that you may at one point call upon, but right now yes. you're not using it. So what would you say instead? I exercise my rights. I exercise my rights, yeah. It's like you don't say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm reserving some exercise in a bit. Yes, I suppose if you... If I'm you're, going exercising. Yes, if you go to a... A, a gym. A, a gym, or if you go to a restaurant and you've reserved the seat, you're not there because you're... Uh, but you wouldn't excellent. turn up and say, oh, I'll, um, I'll reserve the seat and then sit down. <laughs> Because you're obvious. So it's, I mean, we know this, don't yes, we? We know yeah. what the meanings of these words, yeah. th some of the meanings of these words, but we, we kind of like forget or the situation is confusing. Yes. Especially when you've got somebody of, uh, dressed in military style uniform or yep. comedy outfit. A clown outfit, clown I outfit. like to say, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, um, we digress a little bit there. Um, so, yeah, so we've touched on why you can't get a fair trial at the magistrates or judge because their hands are tied, because yeah. you come after the law and not before it. So the reason that you can get a fair trial via your fellow man and woman is that even though they have sworn an oath, they cannot be held to it. And that takes us back to the... Right. Um, to the William Penn case, which is case law, which, which was a precedent. Yeah. But also it came back that Judge v Vaughan came back and said that the jury shall not be punished for its verdict, no matter what. Right. So whether they've sworn an oath or whether they believe the, the, the verdict to be correct or not, they cannot be punished for their verdict. So even though they swear an oath, they cannot be held to it. Right. It's, it's already set in yes, stone. It's already set in stone. Brilliant. So that's the only way you can get a fair trial by your fellow man or woman. And it, again, it's knowing that so that you can quote that to them because it, it, they may bluff away. But if you're able to say, well, hold on a second and here is the evidence. Yeah. Then that's it. You know, they have to accept it. Yeah, I, I've I've had a, a friend that you've actually interviewed. Actually, oh, okay. Uh, he he, uh, he he was up in court for apparently harassing his local MP. I think he was the one who said you can get uh, direct debits back on your. Oh uh, right, uh, oh, okay. And um, you remember him? Chuckled Tim. That's it, Tim. Yeah, and um, uh, we helped him uh, to go to court. And I gave him a very brief uh, description about how to, you know, hold and um, what to say, if, if anything, in court. And he was charged with harassing his local MP. Of course, he wasn't harassing him. His local MP wasn't available. Um, so he went to court with that charge. He stood up in court, said, I require a trial by jury. They said, no, you're not having one. He said, I require a trial by jury. They said, no, you're not having one. He said, I require a trial by jury. They said, no, you're not having one. Anyway, it got adjourned. Later on, 10 days later, he receives a letter through the uh, mail. Um, it had been discontinued due to a lack of evidence, even though they were gonna charge him on the day if he'd have pleaded guilty. Yes, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. It just goes to show. <clears throat> so, okay. Um, we're halfway through, are we? No, we're about towards the end, un ah. un unless you wanted a, a few other elements dro dropping in. But um, we've got through my initial eight points. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, so this, well, this is, this is uh, a fascinating stuff. Um, and it takes time, doesn't it? I was just, I was going to say, I was, the reason I paused there was thinking it's taken me a long time to get this into my head and I'm still learning. Um, I have yet to, I mean, I've, I've only been in court once and that was on a parking um, misdemeanor, I suppose. But 
I got let off because the evidence was so slim, um, but it was an interesting experience. Mm, it's good. People um, can go and watch various court proceedings. Yes. You know, the public is allowed in. So to gain experience before you actually step your own toe in, yes. go and view some of these court proceedings, then uh, you will be surprised I to, about I, what's I going on. I definitely want to do all of that because mm -hmm. I think that gives you the confidence and you see how, it, how the machinations work. Um, and, you know, becomes less scary yeah. and watch it as a piece of theatre. Um, because, yeah, I was very nervous when I was when I was in there. Of course, I did everything completely wrong. I mean, I admitted who <laughs> I was and all of that. But it didn't really matter because I uh, just very briefly, mine was a parking thing in which they said I it was parked on private property that my son had an office on and I arrived. I went to get the permit and I was away for, say, three minutes, yep. came back. There was a ticket on there with evidence that I'd been away from the car for two minutes. And I just thought that is unreasonable. I didn't even bother to read what that says on their panel. I just thought two minutes, you can't get a permit yeah. within two minutes and get down from his, his he was upstairs in, a, in an office and you know he said hello how are you yeah oh you better have a permit all oh, right I'll go and put it on the car immediately and there it was and also there was no sign of the guy there's no sign to say oh by the way I've got the permit now you know I've only been two minutes come on let's let's, let's be, negotiate ne negotiate be human mm -hmm. about oh, be man and you know so difficult with these these words but he'd gone and so when it all ca when it all came you know as I just I, I then did another bad thing is I got in touch with the company and I said this is unreasonable they said tough you're paying it and if you pay now it's this fine if you leave it it'll be more and I said well I just think it's unreasonable I'm not paying it then it, it took something like eight years really with different because uh, I just refused to pay and then I was just ignored not looking at any of the stuff and I had all these different letterheads with all the bold lettering saying, you know, you've got this and you, you, it's now £300, it's now £400, we just kept going out. And they kept giving it to different debt collectors. Yeah. Nobody came to the door, though. Um, and then, then it went, we're going to take you to court. OK, take me to court. And, and it wasn't that I was frightened because I just kept thinking, even though it was within the system, I just thought two minutes is unreasonable. Yeah. And I thought that's the that's my evidence. And I had the, the stuff they'd sent me, which showed it was two minutes. And I just thought I was just outraged by the whole fact that they could do it. So then it went, oh, we're going to take the court. Then it wasn't, we're not going to take the court. You're going to go to mediation. And I said, oh, I'm not bothered about any of that. Take me to court. I'll have my day in court. Eventually it went to court. And then even on the day of the court, a, somebody from the car parking place came up to me and they said, you know you're going to lose and it'll be about <laughs> three or four hundred pounds. We could come to a deal. If you pay us two hundred pounds now, we'll drop it. Yeah. And I said, I've waited eight years for this. I'm not going to drop it. Said, well, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. And I just said, well, I, you know, I said to you, look, I, you're a, a real, I didn't say living person, you know, you're a person, I'm a yeah. person. Two minutes, come on, that is unreasonable, surely. And they said, well, you're going to lose. So it was uh, over in a matter of minutes because the, ju the judge, the magistrate there, s barely spoke to me at all, just said, well, I've looked at your stuff and you've given this gentleman two minutes to get a ticket and basically said what I'd said, you know, that is unreasonable, yeah. case dismissed. And um, I did cast a glance at the woman. I think she knew that it was going to lose. I think yeah. they, they- Just try, trying their luck. Yeah, that last 200 quid, which may have got some of their, okay, but she had to come all the way from wherever it was because they were down, the company was down in um, Devon somewhere. Right. And I'm up in Worthing. And they did say, you know, your local court, which was, it was all in my advantage. So anyway, so that was my one experience, but I would, be somewhat different now yeah so th perhaps you did receive a fair trial yes. at that point and you are were or what are the exception yes the so exception I could, proves the rule well I this think. is it and and of course <clears throat> if i didn't know what i do know and, and and not spoken to people like you i may well be advocating the system because it worked for me mm. And yet it may then, for the person I'm saying, oh, no, no, don't worry, they'll, they'll be reasonable. It may not work for them at all. Yeah, I, I would always say be flexible. 
be willing to move in any direction to navigate the system. Yeah. Be flexible. Be flexible. Yeah. From what you've said here and all the notes that you brought in, in the conversation, one of the things that clearly in, in a whole load of this environment that we all find ourselves in as we, we're becoming more aware of the various things going on in this world, fear is the biggest thing that they nab you with, with the whole pantomime, the theatre, the clothes, all of that. Yeah, they definitely get you with fear, yes. I mean... I mean, you had them banging on your door and entering your property. Yeah, they came, property. came for me twice in the middle of the night, um, obviously trying to break me, uh, which did not succeed. It only served to, you know, resolve my fortitude um, in, you know, in the unjustness of it all. Um, did you get any compensation for that? No, the... no, no. I, I, I'm very much a believer that I don't want any interaction with them so i don't want to be appealing to them for anything so even if they did do me an injustice which i believe they did mm. all right it's taught me a lesson some lessons are good some lessons are bad i'm not going to go there to them with cap in hand for anything nothing i just want them to go away and disappear and dissolve out into the abyss um, so to get compensation off them, I would have to fill out forms, go and appeal to them. Yes. I'm not doing any of that. Nothing. No. No. So just before we finish <clears> then, <throat> do you consider yourself living in the private as much as you can? Um, or is that a gray area? Um, uh, there's a, there is a bit of a common misconception with private. Um, people believe that you can register a private trust if you involve the government or any council or any entity of that description you are not private the word private means you don't tell other people you keep it to yourself not that it's necessarily secret but it's private mm. so nobody else's business if i was to set up let's say um an organization and I wish to keep that private or company or business or whatever the word private to means I keep my mouth shut and I don't tell other people who don't do not need to know so that is the word private so is that it so are you are you saying that I mean there's the system that you can engage with but if you're not in if you're not engaging with the system you wouldn't necessarily call that private you're just not in you're just not engaging you have to be careful about the word private and how it's used because like I've just mentioned, yeah. you can go and register a private trust. I but mean, you've registered it. That, that, those words that I have just used are madness. Right. It's like a, a sovereign citizen. You can't register a private trust. Those are just conflicting words. Right. Same as a sovereign citizen. Sovereign is somebody that is, you know, got their own autonomy. Yes. Does as they wish as long as they cause no harm. Citizen is, is, is bound to certain rules and regulations. They're complete opposites of the scale. Oil so, and water. Yeah, so, Chalk and so people must be aware, they must be able to comprehend the, what the word private means. The private, private word means keep it to yourself and don't tell any government agents or anything of that nature they don't need to know the moment they do then you have gone into their realm right yes so it's about not consenting not giving jurisdiction just keeping yourself to yourself doing what you want to do and where where how does it work then when they say ah but you okay know. so uh, who, who are they writing to first they would have to have somebody's name Yes. or a name of some description the moment that you give them a name you are declaring that you are acting for that name because otherwise they wouldn't have got that name yes. and it won't matter whether it's from the land registry or through some type of council tax or anything of that nature if they have if you've been given that name then it's done voluntarily 
that is a subject that we uh, we must do another video on at some point. I'll yeah. have to come up to lovely Buxton and, <laughs> in the Derbyshire. We'll the go and have some spring water. Yes. Yeah, in go. the park. Straight from the rocks. Um, Dean, thank you so much for coming in. It's been an absolute pleasure and thank driving you. all that way down. Mm -mm. I shall throw him out now. No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> um, it's been absolutely fascinating um, and obviously value your comments uh, in the in the thing we'll leave the links to those other videos where possible but thank you so much for watching i hope you've got something out of it it's been uh, an absolute privilege to have you in the kitchen thank you and until next time um, i'll be back with more monologues and more wonderful guests but until then thank you and goodbye thanks richard <laughs>